In this tutorial, we will be considering the renin-angiotensin aldosterone system. The renin-angiotensin aldosterone system is in place to help regulate blood pressure. The functions of aldosterone specifically are to increase sodium reabsorption, but angiotensin works to increase blood volume. So to begin, the stimulus that is detected to begin the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone mechanism is a decrease in blood volume. This is going to directly target and have an effect on the kidney. It's important to recognize that the kidney itself can act as an endocrine gland. The kidney can secrete urethropoietin, which will have an effect on bone marrow to cause the production of red blood cells. The kidney also can release renin, and renin is an enzyme. And when renin is released, this enzyme is going to act on a previously circulating protein known as angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen is a very large bulky globular protein that has been released by the liver and is circulating in the blood. So when renin is released by macula densa cells associated with the kidney itself, and the cue for the macula densa cells to release the renin is a drop in blood volume, we're going to get the product of angiotensin 1. So this is modification of this globular protein angiotensin into angiotensin 1, and angiotensin 1 is going to remain in circulation. And the lungs are going to release another enzyme. This enzyme is known as angiotensin converting enzyme. This is quite a mouthful, so we'll be referring to it as ACE or ACE. So when ACE interacts with angiotensin 1, we create angiotensin 2. So angiotensin 2 is another peptide hormone that at this point is going to be targeting a number of tissues. Now, because this is circulating in the bloodstream, we see an effect directly on blood vessels and that's going to cause vasoconstriction. And when vasoconstriction occurs, that's going to help increase blood pressure. Although the volume itself is not changed, the space of which we need to fill is going to have diminished. So less volume, but less space to fill with that volume. Angiotensin is also going to affect the adrenal cortex. So this is my adrenal gland in cross section and I'm coloring in the cortex region. The adrenal cortex of the adrenal gland will release aldosterone, which is the hormone that got us on this topic in the first place. And the aldosterone is going to directly affect the kidney and the kidney is going to increase its sodium reabsorption. When sodium is reabsorbed, this is going to cause a cascade of effects within the kidney that's going to cause water retention as well, and this is going to help return us to a normal blood volume. But the story doesn't stop here because the brain is also looking for circulating amounts of angiotensin 2. So the brain 
pardon my really ugly brain, is going to respond by secreting antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone, as we've discussed previously, is also going to target the kidneys, and in this case is going to cause an increase in water reabsorption. And this water reabsorption is going to function to help return us to normal blood glucose levels. Now in addition, the hypothalamus, as it's detecting angiotensin II, is going to respond with a sensation of thirst. When you get thirsty, you ideally increase your water intake. This gets absorbed across your gut and ultimately is going to help restore blood volume as well. So what are these different things? Renin, angiotensinogen, angiotensin itself, allosterone. Well, renin itself is an enzyme that is secreted by the kidney, by the macula densa cells, in response to a decrease in blood volume. This enzyme works on already circulating angiotensinogen, which is this big serum globulin, a big protein that was generated in the liver. Then the combination of renin and angiotensinogen is going to be, begin a pathway in which angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensin 1. This is going to be a peptide. Again, angiotensin converting enzyme, which is a pro protein, is going to modify angiotensin 1 into its active form, which is angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is going to work on the brain, it's going to work on the blood vessel, but it's also going to cause the cortex of the adrenal gland to start secretion of aldosterone, which is a steroid-based hormone. Now, we've talked previously about the idea of hormone receptors and hormones that have to circulate either on a protein in the blood or dissolved in blood themselves. Remember steroid proteins have to be bound to some sort of protein in the blood in order to circulate because steroids, lipids themselves, are not soluble in water. Now aldosterone itself actually doesn't have its own receptor or its own binding site on these proteins in the blood. However, it has natural affinity to them and does tend to circulate with them. Because aldosterone doesn't have a receptor on the plasma proteins, it means that aldosterone only remains in circulation long enough for it to cause a brief spike in sodium reabsorption at the kidney level. Pathologies that we may see with uh, inadequate amounts of aldosterone or really anything in the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system is going to be related to blood pressure. So if we don't have enough renin or enough ACE or even enough aldosterone, we're likely going to see hypotension or decreased blood pressure. And if I have hypersecretion, we're going to see the opposite effect where I have too much blood volume. That's going to give me high blood pressure. This completes the tutorial on renin angiotensin aldosterone. For information on antidiuretic hormone, please see the corresponding tutorial.